A question I get a lot from readers of my book, The Art of Tapestry Weaving, is how tight should my wart be? This is something that is really hard to communicate in printed form. So this video should help you figure out a little bit better how tight you should have your tapestry warp as you're weaving. Let's start by talking about looms that do have an ability to tension the warp or get tighter and looser. When I got my very first Mirax loom, I thought, well, they send a wrench with the loom. Certainly the tighter the warp is, the better. So I would use that wrench and tighten the warp absolutely as much as I could. I use cotton seam twine for my warps and it's a very strong warp and it will take a lot of tension and the Mirax looms can really dish it out. It didn't take too long to realize that I was making my cuticles and fingertips bleed from the high tension of the warp and I started playing a little bit with warp tension myself. I realized that the tension I was using on the Mirex just because it could hold a high tension was actually a lot higher than on my big tapestry looms that I had used previously to that. So I started backing off the tension on the Murex a little at a time until I found that sweet spot where my fingers were happy and not bleeding, but I had a high enough tension that the weaving was easy. These days, if I'm using a Murex loom, and I'm talking about the larger um, looms that Murex makes that are a frame, uh, I do not use the little wrench that they send. I just tighten the wing nuts about as tight as I can get with my hands. My hands are not overly strong, so I have a nice tight warp, but it's not so tight that I'm hurting myself. The advantage of using looms with tensioning ability is that you can loosen or tighten the warp as you need to. Usually this is a minor adjustment, but for example, if you use cotton seam twine as your warp, that warp will get looser over time if the tapestry sits on the loom for a while, or if you have a lot of humidity changes, the, the warp can loosen up. It's really nice to be able to just add a little more tension and keep weaving. It doesn't hurt your tapestry to adjust the warp tension a little bit here and there as you're weaving. You won't see a difference in your work. And I'm going to recommend in this video that you actually play with the warp tension a little bit to find the right tension for you. This is a Merrick Lanny loom. It's the smallest of, one of the smallest of the looms that I like to use for tapestry um, made by Mirex. And it's warped continuously. So there are two layers of warp. This is the little uh, wrench that I was talking about that comes with the loom. They used to be made of aluminum and look like this. They're now made of clear plastic, but they're a similar shape. Here's the wing nuts and Here's a really floppy warp. Look at how floppy that is. You should be able to see that in the video that this is just moving all over the place. The warp is way too loose. As I tighten it, I'm gonna move the uh, wing nuts around to the right. It gets tighter. This is still too loose. See how bouncy that is? I like my warps tighter than this. So let's go another couple turns. Notice I'm turning the tensioning device at the same rate. I don't want one side of the loom to get higher than the other side. Oh, this is getting closer. It's still a little bit soft, but it is uh, much firmer than it was. So let's go a half. Ooh, I, that might be good enough. It still moves a little when I touch it, but it is quite firm. I'm gonna try one more half turn. And that's about as tight as I can go with my hands. That is quite a firm tension, and I do often like to weave on something that is this firm. You can see it doesn't move a lot, but it's not uh, so tight that I'm gonna hurt my fingers. This is the point where if I wanted to use the wrench, I could put it here and tighten these wing nuts farther, but I find that that makes the warp too tight, so I pretty much don't use those wrenches anymore. You will want a similar tension on other kinds of tensioned looms. This is a copper pipe loom. This one I made myself. And you tension it by making these wing nuts move apart. So again, I can make it tighter by turning these little nuts and, or these are hex nuts. You could put wing nuts here and the warp will get tighter. That's a nice tight warp and it feels very similar to this Mirex warp. And so I am good there. 
let's talk about looms that don't have any ability to tension your warp. Many of you will be using simple looms that don't have the ability to get longer. Um, increasing the length of the loom against the warp is how we increase warp tension. Looms like maybe this Handy Woman Shop Loom. This is a beautiful loom. Many of my students use it and I love mine. This loom is a slot loom. It has slots on the top. Um, other such looms have pegs that come out the front. They work the same and most of them don't have any tensioning ability at all. These are fine for tapestry. It's just that there is a sweet spot for how big the loom is. I don't like usually to use a tapestry loom that is much shorter than this one. I think this is the, um, might be the 10 inch Handy Woman shop um, top to top. I do have some tiny ones that I use for backpacking, but what you'll notice is that the shorter the loom gets, the harder it is to weave on and the more warp tension problems you have. A very short loom as you're weaving, the warp will get a little bit tighter. So if the loom is quite short, it can get so tight that it's almost impossible to weave on. So I really try to keep my untensioned tapestry looms to at least six inches long, sometimes even longer if I can. Once you get an untensioned loom that is more than about 18 inches long, it's really hard to maintain a higher warp tension, even when you're using cotton seam twine. So that sweet spot for an untensioned loom is somewhere between eight inches or so long and about 18. Here's an example of a loom that doesn't have a tensioning device at all. This is made by Handy Woman Shop. It's a lovely loom. I really like her work. And this is, uh, doesn't have any way to expand the loom to put more tension on the warp. As I warp the loom, I want it to be fairly firm. So I have a very similar firmness here to what I had on this Mirex warp. It's nice and firm. There is a danger on a small loom like this that if you're weaving very far up the warp, it will get so tight it will be hard to weave on. So I recommend using a cotton seine twine warp, which has just a tiny bit of stretch to it. And that can really help on these looms that don't have tensioning. There are lots of other looms that don't have tensioning that are great to use for tapestry. Um, a couple other examples are the, um, this is a lily loom from Schacht and it's just a peg loom. Uh, and then I had talked about some shorter looms. These are, this is my backpacking loom. I've been using this for a long time. This is made by Jim Hokett, who no longer makes these looms, but it's just a very tiny loom. It's only about five inches long. So it gets really tight if you're trying to weave anything more than just a couple inches high. Here's the equivalent Handy Woman shop loom. This is my new backpacking loom. I love it. It's very light. It's very fun to use, but again, I only weave little tiny things on it. Another class of looms that we look at is looms that have beams. A lot of these are very large looms. They have one beam that holds the warp before you weave it. Then the warp travels through the loom and on the front, the warp is tied on and that is where the cloth that you're weaving will go. Some of these looms are designed for tapestry. Rug looms make great tapestry looms because they're designed to hold a high tension. And there are many upright tapestry looms also designed to hold high tension. Many of us are fabric weavers and we might own a light jack loom. This is the kind of loom where the jacks pop up when you push the treadle. These lighter looms are not designed for high tension and though they will work to some extent for tapestry, they're not actually the best choice if you want a nice high tension as you're working. In general, if you have a fairly large tapestry loom with beams, like a, a rug loom or an upright tapestry loom, probably about as tight as you can get that warp is going to be where you want it. Um, again, you don't want to bloody your fingers. Maybe your loom is actually capable of a tension that is too tight. But for the most part, a really nice taut tension, especially if your piece is quite wide, is what you're going to go for. Since the tension on these looms is adjustable, obviously you can play with it just a little bit if it is too tight or not quite tight enough. I do know a few professional tapestry weavers who like a really 
soft warp. They like their warp to be floppy as they're weaving. These people actually amaze me because I find it very difficult to weave on a warp that is quite loose. But um, these are also people with decades of experience weaving and they have figured out what works for them with their materials and their loom and their warp over time. In general, I would say 95% or more of long-term tapestry weavers are using warps that are quite tight. So here's my recommendation for you, no matter what loom you have, put on a warp and put it quite tight. Maybe try to make it even too tight and then weave a little bit and see what your experience of that is. If you have a loom with um, tensioning ability then, loosen the warp a little bit and try again. See how the weaving goes. Keep loosening it until you get to a point where it's just too loose and you're having trouble managing your weft tension or your salvages are getting wonky or things just aren't working well. Go back, tighten it up and find that sweet spot for you. Make sure you feel the warp with your hand so that you get a real idea of where that is and then each time you put a new warp on, Make sure you do that. It's a tactile thing that you will get much better at with practice. To be honest, the sweet spot with warp tension will vary for each weaver. It depends a lot on what materials you're using, what your warp and weft are, what set you're weaving at, how wide you're weaving, and what loom you're using. So I really encourage you to play with it. To start with, I'm going to say that a fairly tight tension is where you want to go, but it's good to experiment, so go figure out your own equipment. If you have more questions about warp tension or anything else related to tapestry weaving, please put them in the comments below. You might be interested in one of my online classes. I have them for beginners all the way through more advanced students in technique and design and dyeing and uh, ways to warp all those sorts of things. So I would love to see you online and you can find me at tapestryweaving.com. Thanks y'all. Till next time, happy weaving. <laughs>